Hey everybody, it's me, Richard, with Nightmares. Cheers, anyone? So today, we're gonna have some coffee. And a little bit of the plague. Come back after the intro. Hey everybody, it's me Richard with Nightmares, Tears, Anyone. And as you can see, I've got my rotten little face on here. It's because we're going to be talking about Hester and the Black Death. Alright, that's enough about the plague. So, yeah, that's enough about the plague. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> where do I want to go with this book? I'm going to throw my readers on here for just a second. I wanted to say hi to all of you. Thanks for stopping by, taking time and out of your day. Now let's talk about this book. This is The Plague Stones by James Brogdon. Beautiful cover of a book. Came out in, let's see. Hmm. May of 2019. This is published by Titan Books. Uh, it's a beautiful, actual, it's an actual beautiful cover of a book. It's a beautiful book. Uh, now, as you can see that crow there with the red piercing eyes, he's sitting on a stone with some binary around it. Now, this came out from Titan Books. It has got 420 pages in it. Now, as with all my reviews, this has to do with my opinion only of this book. You might have liked this book. You might have loved this book. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, I did not love this book. Took me a little over almost 16 days to read. And for a book, uh, let me get my so yeah for a, for a the hell is that I don't know what that noise is but anyway I'm not gonna worry about it so uh I am going to read you the back of the cover of the book. And then I'm going to do something that I haven't done in a long time. I'm going to read you some passages from the book. Now, it says on the back, She's waited centuries for revenge. Now, this is about the, pl the Black Death. The plague that swept Europe in the 1300s. So yeah, this book takes place in modern time. And it takes place over 800 years ago. Now, I'm going to read you the back of the book. After a brutal break-in leaves her family traumatized, Trish Feenan jumps at the chance of a fresh start at a charming historic community. But in the back garden of her new cottage sits an unsettling reminder of past wrongs, a standing stone, once one of the markers that kept plague sufferers, once one of the markers that kept plague sufferers outside the village bounds. Its powers renewed every year in a ritual that seems to be more than just local adultery. <laughs> a local adultery. It says uh, local oddity. Yeah. <laughs> just my uh, train of thought and my bad eyes in this dark room. Kind of. Yeah, it is kind of dark out. It's kind of overcast today, but... Uh, 
As the Fiendans settle in, they experience unexplained accidents, accompanied by sightings of a girl who vanishes into thin air. Soon it becomes obvious that there is a reason traditions must not slip, and that all acts of betrayal, even those committed centuries ago, have consequences. Yes, this book is considered horror. First off, before I get into the review, I did not think it was horror at all. It's more of a mystery thriller with a little couple passages of mild, mild gore in it. Yeah, not a horror book that I would call. Uh, it's more of a mystery thriller. So let's get into this. So yeah, Trish and her husband, Paul Feenan, moved from London because Trish has inherited this stone cottage in Haleswell Village. Now, the village for hundreds of years has got a trust committee, kind of like our modern day, um, you know, real estate agents here in America. And they take care of their community. Now, they have a 14 year old son. And what makes them move from London is because they have a violent break in that affects, that affects, that affects our son Toby uh, in a very, very, very weird way. It traumatizes him. I can't imagine, you know, playing video games and people break in and yeah, it's very violent. It's, uh... so they move, they move from London to this uh, old, old, old English um, village. And the village has got plague stones around the village. Now these were big stones. Some could be a foot tall all the way to four to five feet tall. Now these were markers that people at the time of the plague had placed around the village or in front of their homes to keep people that had the plague from going past these. So they were kind of like an invisible fence or a boundary that kept the people with the Black Plague out of these areas. Now, the book is so slow. Now, that's not saying that Brogdon isn't a good author. He can write. Uh, he's not a great author. The writing is very, very, very inconsistent. Uh, like I said, it's a very slow burn. It takes forever to get going. It kind of grabs you at the beginning with these creepy little images, you know, but nothing scary, uh, nothing really violent. The ending, I must say, the ending of the book, the last 15, 20 pages was the best part of the book for me. Now, when they move to the stone cottage, Toby's in his room one day and he notices out his bedroom window that he thinks he sees something over by a tree. Well, yes, he notices the image of, the image of a girl, like a, a young girl watching him. That girl is Hester. It's, 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 re it's released and known to you very early in, in the beginnings of the book. Um, he's kind of, mis you know... He's kind of uh, drawn toward this girl, wondering, you know, who she is, what's wrong with her. But it takes such a long time for this book to really get going. There were times where I thought, I'm just going to DNF this. But I did buy this book. It was like, uh, how much was this book? I bought it. Oh, my gosh. I I, I must have bought it like two years ago. It just sat on my shelf forever. Yeah, I paid $16 for it. Now, he is, uh, James Brogdon is also the author of Heckless Children, The Hollow Tree, and then there's a, a, another book out called The Bone, The Bone Garden or something. The Bone. But the books are very cool looking. This one being a, a, a matte muted yellow. And then the other one, Heckless Children is red. And then the hollow tree, as you can see, if I can get it to focus, is green. And then the, his newest book is orange. Uh, but, yeah, 
Uh, I'm going to read you these three little passages out of here really quick. Because I'm not going to spoil anything. I just want you to kind of experience how Brogdon writes. Now, with him being a British author, he writes, well, let's just say... There were many, many, many times while I read while I was reading this book, I actually had to ask Google or look up terminology, uh, words. Um, I'm not saying that they're misspelled, but they spell words. Comp you know, there's a lot of words in the British language um, where they they just spell things different. So, like. The word tire is T-Y-R-E, you know, just silly things like that. But there's complete different terminology for for things, verbs, nouns that I didn't even know what they were talking about. So I, like I said, I had to ask Google or look it up. So that being something that I constantly had to do really took me out of the moment of this book. Um, so I want to read you a couple little passages out of this book. So the first one, so this is very early in the book. She stood before them now in the shifting red ember light, and for a sickening moment she was certain that the people lying before her weren't just asleep, but actually dead, victims of the pestilence. And that if she were to step over them, she would see blackened fingertips clawed in their final death agonies as if reaching out to grasp her ankle as she passed to pull her down amongst them where she would stare into their glassy eyes and smell the pus weeping from the swollen buboes of the ar in their armpits and in their throats, corrupting their voices as they mocked her with red clotted laughter. Hester whimpered and laughed and nearly ran for the ladder back to her safe nest in the roof. Buboes? I don't think I've ever even heard that word, so of course I had to ask, you know, what a boobos was. Um, another one. Around the next one, Trish nearly ran into the back of her. She was right there, almost within arm's reach, bending down to duck through a hole in the chain link fence, on the other side of which cars and lorries, lorries, I knew lorry was a truck. I learned, I remember reading, a, I remember coming across that terminology once in junior high school where which cars and lorries flashed past she was going out onto the dual carriageway where she was certain to get hit and now it didn't matter whether she was scared or stupid this close trish noticed the girl's smell and it was rank and foul like the stench of something long dead and rotted in stagnant water but she didn't have time to process this fact properly because then the girl slipped through the gap into the stream of traffic and Trish yelled no and ducked through her after her grabbing her nearly grabbing their rotted ankle and nearly lost her balance on the edge of a yawning pit she flailed behind fingers behind herself finding and fingers finding and hooking in the chain link fence arresting her forward plunge yeah so it's writing like this it just goes on and on and on and on and on and you only come across these kind of parts every once in a while. But there's another one I want to read. This is a scene where Brogdon describes how a doctor bled. how Because do doctors bled people back in the days. They would uh, slit their skin or slit their veins to release the infected blood. He then took a slender but wickedly pointed knife and with his long pale fingers pushed the blade lengthwise into the largest ve blood vessel at the patient as the patient screamed and writhed against the hands that held him down. The jet of crimson which arced out onto the wound, out of the wound was caught in a small bowl by her father with trembling hands and a little slopped over the side. Hordern let it flow until the man's struggles eased sufficiently for him to judge that some of the excess had been removed, then repeated the procedure on his other arm so that his humors would be balanced in both sides of his body. Humors? I don't know if that's supposed to be his humorous bone, but 
it just, um, yeah, when you read a book like this, that is, you know, just constantly words and terminology. I'm just uh, unfolding the pages uh, that I just read. Yes, because I know I won't read this again. Um, but uh, there's one more. This is a, this is just like a little scene of where he's describing the pestilence or the plague in the village. But now with us dealing with uh, what we're going through now worldwide, I can't imagine having to even deal with a plague that was carried by fleas in the bellies of rats. And once you were scratched or bitten by a rat, you were infected. Uh, and the rats were millions. Like they say today, there's, um, I think like a hundred rats per human being, something like that, but it's gross. As if the village's priest were the final stones to fall from a leaking dam, Clegum hemorrhaged altogether. The pestilence was terrifying enough, but the fear of dying without the church's last rites produced a soul-deep horror with which even drove those who were already gravely ill to find someone who could minister to them. Hester saw the corpse of an old woman at the edge of the village, her hands and knees bloodied from crawling, who had obviously decided that there was nothing more to be lost by dying on the road rather than in her home. Flies were feasting at the open sores on her scrawny legs and rose in an angry buzzing cloud when Hester disturbed them. She froze at the sight of the woman's body. No attempt had been made to even cover her, and Esther well understood why. Now, that's how the book goes and goes and goes. But these scenes and these de de depictions of, you know, kind of mild, gruesome, there was only like seven or eight in 413 pages. Like I said, the book was a, probably about 150 pages too long. And I can't recommend it. Um, I'd say skip it unless you can get a copy from your library and you like slow burn books about the 1300s, you know, the, the, the Black Plague. Read it. You'll probably like it. I didn't like it. Um, I gave the book, it's a beautiful book, like I said, um, I would give it a two and a half. Uh, the last 15 pages of a 400 and, why did I say, 13 page book doesn't make up for anything better to me than a 2.5. Round it up to three for Goodreads. That's James Brogdon's The Plague Stones. You guys, I can't recommend it. Um... But if you haven't done so already and you like horror as much as I do and you want me to continue making these these videos with this content, I would appreciate a thumbs up today. Uh, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit that and ring that little bell so you get notifications of when I post another video. Um, what's been going on lately? I'm still trying to finish December Park. Now, December Park being one of Ronald Malfi's earlier books and considered a cult, hard to find classic. I've been reading this book since September. Yeah, it's on my Kindle. Well, it's not on my Kindle, but it's on my tablet. And I'm reading it through the Kindle app. I'm, it, it's not saying that it's not a good book. It is a good book. I just always forget that it's there because I'm either working on diamond paintings or jewelry or listening to three or four books at one time or physically reading books. As you guys can see behind me, I have tons of books. But you guys take care of yourselves. Tomorrow is St. Patty's Day. If you do celebrate, have a dark green beer for me. I know I'm gonna partake in mine. Uh, you guys, once again, I'm Richard with nightmares. Cheers, anyone. This one sure didn't do it. Take care, you guys. I'll see you in the next video.